Hi, fifth grade. Today we're going to be reading Lunch Money and we're going to be reading chapter 10. And this chapter is called Something Fishy. You should be on page 97. So make sure you're following along with me. <clears throat> chapter 10, Something Fishy. Greg was quiet in the car on the way home and so was Mora. But it wasn't awkward. Mora's mom was perfectly happy to do all the talking. Oh, you poor dear. Look at me. Oh, ooh, such a bruise. And my, Mora did this? It was just an accident. And you know that, don't you? That it was an accident? Not like that time in first grade when you bumped Mora off the edge of the sliding boards. Or that time you threw the snowball into her face. But still, you poor dear. That must hurt like crazy. Is that compress still cold? Good. Now you just lean back, because we don't want your nose to start bleeding again. Not here in the car. Mr. Shaw would give us all black eyes if that happened. I'm only kidding. But lean back farther. That's a good boy. Remember, Mora, when our Tommy got hit with that lacrosse ball, snapped his nose like a carrot stick and the blood oh you would not believe it and when i got down to that field it was only a five or six minute drive but by the time he got home greg had heard a detailed description of every major blood producing event endured by the shaw family over the past 15 years his own mom was not impressed with his condition she gave him a quick once over and said go put that shirt in cold water in the in an and in the laundry room then take a shower since i'm home a little early i think i'm going to make lasagna for dinner How's that sounds? And that was it from his mom. By dinner time, the bruise had spread under his left eye and his big brothers wanted details. What do you mean, an accident, said Ross. Did you fall off the climbing wall or get hit by a baseball? What? Greg shook his head. It was somebody's hands. Edward said, some kid hit you? No, said Greg. It was just a bump and she didn't mean to. She? said Ross. A girl did this? That's lousy. I mean, if a guy whacks you, you can whack him back. But if it's a girl, boys, their dad's tone of voice from the chatter, their dad's tone of voice froze the chatter. Nobody in this family whacks anybody. It was an accident, so just drop it, all right? Ross and Edward let it go, at least until after dinner. Greg was sitting at his desk doing a tally of the day sales when both his brothers came bursting into his room. They each had painted on a black eye, and Ross, panting like he'd been hit, like he'd been running, said, Hide us! Hide us! Me and Edward, we were outside just now, and this whole gang of tiny little girls came up and started pounding us. It was terrible. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And when they both fell on the floor, um, howling with laughter. Greg wanted to laugh, too, but he didn't dare. Ross was a high school sophomore, and Edward was a freshman. The slightest encouragement of their madness could prove fatal. As coldly as possible, Greg said, very funny, and went back to his numbers. He always did the accounting before he started his homework. About 20 minutes later, Greg was almost done with his social studies reading when his mom called up the stairs. Greg, telephone. He trotted out and grabbed the portable phone off the table in the hall. It was the last person he wanted to hear from. Greg, it's me, Mora. There was an assignment in math, and you weren't there, so I thought you'd want to know, Greg said. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I was going to call and get it from Ted's. And he thought, what does, she, what, does she think I'm stupid that I miss a math assignment? But in a fairly pleasant tone of voice, he said, so what's the assignment? You have a pencil? Uh-huh. Greg had already hurried back to his room for fear that his brothers might guess he was talking to a girl. On page 17, it's exercise B, said Mora, all the even number problems, and I could help if you don't understand it or something because you weren't there. No, that's okay, said Greg. I can do it. This stuff is still review, so this is good. Yeah, this is good. Mora said, Mr. Z told everybody to pay special attachment attention to the decimal points and he said he might give a quiz which means he probably will good said greg i mean that's good to know yeah good this is good already this was the longest phone conversation greg had ever had with a female who was not his relative or at least 30 years old or both plus greg couldn't help remembering what mr z had said that he thought mora found him interesting even with a topic as safe as a math assignment greg felt the strain he was ready to sign off then Mora said, I read your comic book again. It makes my unicorn story just look awful. I know you said mine isn't a comic book, but I don't really get what that means. Probably because I haven't looked at comic book comic books much. Tommy has some, but I never got into reading them, so I don't really know what makes them so different. 
Greg knew what the difference was. It was simple, because a good comic book is almost like a movie. The words of a comic book are like the scripts. Every panel is a little scene that moves the story ahead, and time can be speeded up or slowed down, just like in a movie. And because he understood comics, Greg almost started to explain. Then he remembered this was Mora on the phone. Mora the copycat. Mora the idea thief. Mora the enemy. So Greg said, yeah, well, listen, I've got to finish my social studies reading. And since he didn't want to be completely rude, Greg said, thanks for the math assignment. You're welcome, Mora said. Well, see you around. Not if I see you first, Greg thought. But he said, yep. Bye. And he pushed the phone's off button. Sitting there at the desk in his room, Greg knew the real reason Mora had called him. It wasn't to try to help him out with his math grade. She had called to fish around for new ideas. She was trying to beat him at his own game. She was trying to get ahead. Trying to figure out how to make her dumb little books better so she could make some nice cash. And Greg thought, nice try, weasel brain. If you think I'm going to help you make money, think again. You're on your own. And that is the end of chapter 10.